back at it again with another retrospective slash review, this time on a movie. Released in 2001, Ultraman Tiga, The Final Odyssey, is a sequel to the 1996 television series Ultraman Tiga. Like the show it's a sequel to, I recommend watching the retrospective I did on the show first. There's enough in this movie to fill in the gaps, but it's very much a companion piece for the show. My friend. Taking place a couple years after the events of the show's finale, protagonist Daigo Madoka has lost the ability to turn into Tiga, and, more importantly, is now engaged to Reina. This piece is temporary, as a recent expedition to the ancient ruins that rose during the final episode unleashes three giants of darkness from their slumber, and they want Tiga back. Yeah, we get some lore here. There was a great war between the giants of light and darkness in the past, and Tiga was one of the bad guys. Tempted by the darkness but unwilling to give in to it, Daigo must transform into Tiga again to save the world, regain his powers, and, most importantly, protect his marriage. The final Odyssey very much feels like a more cinematic extension of the show. One of the first shots of the movie is the frame widening, to show that this adventure is no longer confined to a TV standard aspect ratio. <laughs> Getting to see the gang together for one more mission is great, even if they're very much sidelined in favor of Daigo's whole dilemma. Munakata here gets a little story about feeling remorse for not going in Iruma's place on the expedition that ultimately trapped her in the ruins. Iruma admittedly doesn't get much to do in this movie. She spends the entire thing running around caves, so that is a little disappointing. She was one of the best characters in the show. Like the show itself, there are even moments of cheese, too. It feels like a natural extension of the show on both a stylistic and cinematic level. It even has much of the same staff that worked on Tiga. Even the color timer, which would have started blinking not even two minutes into a fight in the show, isn't held down by the same restrictions in a movie like this, so it starts blinking at a time that's most dramatic. The show's composer, Tatsumi Yano, returned for this movie, and brought with them some new orchestrations of the show's music, in addition to some new themes for the movie's antagonists. It's got that epic feel to it. Though it does sound infringingly close to Star Wars at times. Being a movie that was released after Dinah concluded, we even got some cameos from characters in that show, which is a nice little nod to continuity. Like the average Ultraman episode, the fighting is saved for the final act, and we get a lot of it. I'm not much a fan of underwater fights in kaiju media, they're often really slow, but there are a couple moments here that are pretty cool. There's a cool element throughout the finale where Tiga regains his powers. He basically stole them from these guys to begin with. When he's incomplete- Whoa! Whoa! But yeah, the final battle in this movie is pretty good. It's intercut with the other action pretty well, but it's got some pretty butt-ugly CGI at the end. But at this point, I'm invested enough in the characters and story to not mind. While I do like the finale of Tiga, it did kinda take some attention away from Daigo's role. It was more about how humanity as a collective could overcome the odds, and how Daigo didn't need to bear the weight of the entire world on his shoulders anymore. It worked there, but what I like about this movie is that it gives him some agency again. Daigo, specifically, is targeted by the giants, so he, specifically, feels responsible for stopping them. And sure, I still don't think he's a particularly interesting protagonist, but I actually want to see him succeed. He fought to protect so much over the course of the 52-episode series. Of course he has the right to defend the relationships he's built. The fact that the Giants of Darkness aren't even going to do anything for a hundred years, but Daigo decides to defeat them now anyways, shows he's become a progressive protagonist rather than a simply reactive one. That's what I like to see. 
the anniversary slash self-proclaimed tribute series Ultraman Trigger, rather than taking much of its inspiration from the main series, based much of its premise on this movie. The three giants of darkness in this film were the basis for the ones in Trigger. The Tika dark form equivalent was given a major facelift for Trigger, and was basically combined with the evil Tika character from the main series, with a different character being able to transform into it. Trigger dark. <laughs> I know Trigger gets a lot of shit. I mean, I kinda hinted at how apathetic I am towards it in the last video. But I will concede that the decision to flesh out the concepts introduced in this movie was a good one. They did the best they could to make the Giants of Darkness more fleshed out characters for a 26 episode series. But yeah, I'll talk about Trigger in more detail some other time. Hopefully not soon. I don't want to watch it again. Smite, smite. But yeah, I really liked the final Odyssey. I like the direction it takes its main character, the fights at the end are pretty fun, and it's suitably epic. It's a great finale to a show that already had a great finale. The fact that it can function as that is just really remarkable. Gee, Tiga, how come Tsuburaya let you have two hot dogs? It's not my favorite Ultraman movie. It kind of requires having to see the show it's a companion to for the most enjoyment, but it is a nice little epilogue for one of the franchise's best entries. Good stuff. I like. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I can't promise that I'll do a retrospective on every Ultraman movie, but I thought the Tiga one was notable enough to do a standalone video on it. Because a lot of the movies that are made now that are tied to shows are just extended episodes of the shows. And I can't make any promises, but if you see a review of the next, then the next video after that is very likely going to be Nexus. But we'll see. Anyways, I want to thank my patrons for making videos like this possible. Queer Kaiju, Radiant GV, Waba, Alcoholic Alligators, Ryan Santa Cruz, Avok Robot, the Antagonist, Richard Siaverdon, Ziggy Zigra, It's God Z, Big Odilo, An Actual Demetrodon, CMG, Red Comet Harry, and Marpzilla. Thank you very much.